Hi. So there have been a lot of evolutions in my body, but one of the ways that I, one of the things I've done to keep this close to me, everything that I bring into the process is by creating rituals around it. You know, we don't realize the rituals we have around the negative things we do. You know, I'm going to go by this store every day or drive here or whatever. You always make sure certain things are done and they could be good habits or bad habits. But for me, establishing habits is what's kept me on my path moving forward. So one of the things that I've done consistently for about the past 30 years is getting ready for my birthday. I mean, that's my celebration, my birthday. It's the day I came into the world to do whatever I was supposed to do. And I don't pick it as a day to go out partying and drinking and, you know, having a good time or whatever. It's like a day of actually being reborn. So what I do is, what I did for years was uh, March 20th, the month before April 20th, which is my birthday, I could set an intention as this is my month of perfection. So whatever I was bringing into the fold of something new, a new habit, I'm, you know, added uh, spirulina to the wheatgrass or whatever I was adding to my, uh, my whole system, um, I would make sure I set the intention to do it starting March 20th. So by April 20th, I had done it perfectly. I did a, a month of perfection for myself. And instead of on my birthday looking and feeling older, I always felt better, you know, and actually I fasted at that time also. So fast forward to turning 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, I added to that whole process and now I do six months before the birthday because I feel there's a lot more to be done. Anyway, six months before my birthday, I do my six month of perfection. So what am I adding to the till this, this year? I've always worked on, and I continue to work on not eating after sundown. You know, I know they call it intermittent fasting. They've got all kinds of fancy names, but we learned years ago the circadian rhythms, you're not supposed to eat after sundown. If, the, if there were no electricity, if we were in the jungle, we wouldn't be able to pick up food, right? It would be some monkey poo, or <laughs> we wouldn't know what it was. So we are designed to stop eating after sundown. And when the sun comes up, we're supposed to flush and clean out all the toxicity that released during the night, and we're supposed to drink things grown highest to the sun, coconut water. Um, I do water, just plain water. Back to eating after sundown. Well, owning restaurants, it's <laughs> it made it such a strong challenge. And I've gone long periods, and those long periods let me know this is what you need to do. But, you know, it hasn't been sustained. So now i got six months I'm going to be working on it. But here's the beauty of it. I set the intention. We're already a day later, and I already didn't do it 100%. I had very little, but I still had something. So that's the other point to setting up the intention. You know what? You do the best you can. If it's not 100% what you decided, mwah, mwah, it's part of my process. You keep moving forward. You don't beat yourself up because you didn't do. You know, I was going to have this video ready for the 20th, and I was going to say, I'm giving this up, blah, blah, blah. And do I, well, it didn't work out. Life happened. But it's not stopping from the intention of, mwah, mwah, I'm doing the best I can, and I'll do even better tonight and the next night when the sun goes down. But anyway, um, maybe you might want to try it. Maybe you might want to do something if you've got an upcoming birthday rather than the whole party scene party route. And I've got nothing against that. I certainly had my years of that too. But maybe set an intention so that by the time you hit your birthday, you look, feel, and everything is better. So to that end, I've done all kinds of rituals my whole life, and I'm going to throw in one that I teach on a regular basis. I actually have people that have been detoxing and cleansing with me for about 35, 40 years. Uh, some of you out there have been doing it for quite a while, but I'm in my new space and I've got some new classes that I'm starting, so maybe you want to jump on board and create a ritual for yourself. Every year you're going to do the nine-day revival or you're going to do a sugar break or you're going to do the 28-day detox. So we got some dates for you. So the nine-day revival starts Tuesday, November 1st, and it'll go through Wednesday the 9th. You can get more information on my website, shopkarens.com. Then I'll be doing a sugar break class with, uh, with uh, two visits from me on that, and I'll be teaching a couple of recipes. And then in December, I'm going to teach a holiday cooking class, and come January, the wonderful 28-day detox will be back. So join me. Maybe you want to start with the uh, November 1st, nine-day revival. Okay, it's a good way to start, and you just keep going right up to Christmas, and then you start the new year off perfect. Anyway, hope I can see you and I join you with some. Take care, and remember, if you don't take care of your body, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given, where are you going to live?